Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, it's been a little while since we have visited our old friend Nick from Phuket Word. Well, he came out with a new video that says the top 10 things that globe scientists got wrong. Challenge accepted. Well, let's jump in and let Nick get right to it. So what we'll do here is just have a look at top 10 globe science facts that have actually never really been proven scientifically. They're not science facts. What you'll find is we have a few experiments, lots of observations that have been interpreted into the notion that we are going around a sun, the heliocentric model as it's uh, often called. Well guys, Nick has laid out his premise for his video. Now remember, this was a single video of his that he went over all 10 of these globe scientific proofs. I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to take them one or two at a time, and I'm gonna go beyond the superficial treatment that he gives it, and go into a little bit more depth. Now for example, his first proof is the Eratosthenes experiment which demonstrated the circumference of the Earth. Now, he gives it a very superficial treatment, dismisses it as sticks in the sand, casting shadows. I'm going to go into the basis of the Eratosthenes experiment, the alternative theories that were being entertained at the time, and subsequent experiments that were performed both in contemporary and later on in the Middle Ages in different parts of the world. So I hope you enjoy the series. So, um, if you start looking into this, the first thing you'll probably find is uh, pages and pages of uh, the alleged first proof that we live on a globe, and that is the Eratosthenes experiment, uh, which apparently uh, determined the circumference of the Earth um, because of shadows measured on sticks and down a well. Now the shape of the earth had been considered in the Greek world prior to the time of Eratosthenes. Aristotle felt that the uh, earth was a disk shape. In the middle we have Pythagoras who felt that the earth was a sphere because in his opinion the sphere was a perfect shape and the gods would have made the earth a perfect shape. This view was supported by Homer that the earth was a sphere. Other shapes were entertained, such as a rectangular shape. However, by the time of Eratosthenes, the Greek world had pretty well settled on the shape of a sphere. Now, the reason for that is the sphere accounted for many of the observations that had been made in the Greek world and were, they were capable of making. First of all, other planetary bodies like the moon were spherical. Ships disappeared hull first over the horizon, which would be seen on a sphere and not on a flat plane. And another observation was that if you saw the sunset at the beach, you could still see the sun if you were on a mountain. So, again, by the time of Eratosthenes, everybody pretty well settled on the shape of the Earth as a sphere. They just didn't know how large it was, and estimates varied widely. Now here are two of the early methods of trying to find a circumference or a radius of the Earth based on observations. The first was looking at the time it took for the sun to set, comparing a beach to a mountain of known height. The second was looking at a star that was on the horizon in one location and comparing it to the elevation above the horizon in another location. If you know the height of the mountain, or if you know the distance between the two locations, you can get a rough estimate of the size of the circle that is involved. However, these are unsatisfactory due to a problem that we have noted repeatedly in the Flat Earth community, and that is the problem of refraction when you're making observations close to the horizon, especially over water. Let me give you an example of refraction. Let's use this, the Monterey Bay mirror observation that was just all the rage of the flat earth a couple of months ago. Here they flashed a mirror on the beach at Monterey Bay and the flash appeared 40 feet higher up at the level of a road. Now as you can see where the flash and the horizon is here, you can see the power plant superimposed behind it and you see all those houses and such that are below the horizon. 
But why is the mirror up that high? Now, just to show you that this is indeed 40 feet above the beach, when we do the action shot, there's going to be a car moving from right to left through the mirror. Watch it. There it is. See it? Let's see if we can see it maybe one more time here. Now watch carefully. There's the mirror flash at the horizon. The car is going past it now. Um, and then from that, the size of the sun and the distance to the sun from the Earth has been uh, calculated. Well, no, Nick, that's not quite true. We didn't calculate the size of the sun nor the distance to the sun using this experiment. I think you're confusing it with Aristarchus. This is what Eratosthenes actually did. What he did was he look at, looked at Cyrene, which is Aswan now, which is located on the Tropic of Cancer. On June 21st, on the Tropic of Cancer, the sun is directly overhead and would shine down to the bottom of a long well in Cyrene. At the same time, he measured the shadow in Alexandria, 500 miles away. That came out to be seven degrees, and from that he calculated the circumference of the Earth to be approximately 25,000 miles. It's 24,901 miles. He did a pretty good job with it. And one of the reasons that he was so accurate is this high angle that he is measuring, and that minimizes refraction. Even though he didn't know what refraction was, he got a better result by measuring something high in the sky versus something very low on the horizon. But actually, it's never, ever been measured. No you know, Nick, funny that you should say that, because as a matter of fact, I have done the Eratosthenes experiment myself. We did it on March 20th this year, and I was in Tawas, Michigan, and I did it with Blue Marble Science, who was down in eastern Tennessee. Now... You can see the apparatus that I used. I used a seven inch builder's square, a level and a paint stick. And down below, you can see me actually doing it, measuring the angle of the shadow. And from that, I was able to calculate the circumference of the earth within about 110 kilometers. Not bad. No one's ever been to the sun. Uh, and really, we don't know what the sun is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stop Nick right there because these are begging the question fallacies. There's a couple of them here. First of all, he is taking as a given that in order to actually know something, you have to personally experience it. Hence, we can't know the distance to the sun because we haven't personally traveled there. That's not a true premise. He has no supporting evidence for that. So that is going to be simply dismissed. The second begging the question fallacy is that we don't know what the sun is. He's not established that we don't know what the sun is. As a matter of fact, we have a very good idea of what the sun is. There are numerous disciplines in science that study the sun, and we've got a good idea. So to simply say we don't know what the sun is, is without supporting that, is an unwarranted claim and a begging the question fallacy as he is using it as the premise of his argument. And this idea that Eratosthenes uh, worked out the circumference of the Earth from measuring shadows is really just an interpretation because you can get exactly the same results across a flat surface uh, with a local sun. Now there is a problem with the Eratosthenes experiment. Here's my measurement in Michigan. I formed a triangle going from Michigan to the equator because the sun was directly over the equator on the equinox to the sun. That would give me a distance to the sun on a flat plane. I could triangulate it. Now, Eratosthenes worked on the assumption that the sun was very distant and the rays coming to the earth were in parallel. That's why he got a circumference. But it is possible to measure a distance to the sun on a flat plane. That's why we added the second measurement in Tennessee, because it, we could do the same thing there. We could measure a triangle from the equator to the sun down to Tennessee, back to the equator. That would also give us a distance to the sun. Those distances did not match. The sun 
on a flat plane would have to be in two different locations above the Earth. That can't happen. That proves that the Earth is a curved surface, and you can actually calculate the curve from that. Now, I would encourage you to have a look at these results and how we did it. Blue Marble Science and I did this back on March 20th. He made a video of it with his calculations. I made a video with my calculations. We both matched. Surprise, surprise. Now, I'll put a link to these videos in the description, and I would strongly encourage you to go have a look at them. They're a fascinating thing, and next year on the Equinox, you can do this at your home. So um, there's nothing that's ever been really done to prove the idea that the sun is 93 million miles away and that it is uh, many, many more times larger than the Earth. So it isn't a scientific fact that Eratosthenes ever discovered the shape of the Earth, the size of the Earth, or the sun, or the distance to the sun. Okay, guys, this is a classic flat Earth straw man argument. Nobody has ever claimed that Eratosthenes determined the distance to the sun, the size of the sun, or anything else. The only thing that we talk about with Eratosthenes is measuring the circumference of the Earth using his shadow experiment. Aristarchus determined the distance to the sun. And we're going to go over how that was done along with the more modern techniques that are used, such as the transit of Venus in our next episode. So guys, take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe down in the lower right corner. And I want to thank you for stopping by. This is Bob the Science Guy, signing out from Northern Michigan. We'll see you again soon.